the entrance up to Myrash. Big hedges here. Keep all the peasants out and the big trees. Got the oak tree there. It goes on up to that telegraph pole on the left. And we walk up the drive and turn into the drive. Lots of overhanging trees here. And that's what we call the paddock. Some trees have been chopped down along there. And this is the other side. And the view down there into the rose garden. That's uh, with Glynn's pride and joy. So we just walk up here, we can see all the different rhododendrons. They tend to come out at different, different stages, so there's colour for quite a few months. They don't all come out at once. And the roses aren't out yet, it's a bit early for the roses. So you can see the house up here. That's a day here at the moment. So again, these are about to flower. These are flowering for the first time since we've been here, which is a bit unusual. Again, the paddock, you can see up there. And that that's where the first ones come out, and they're the second. What's the greenhouse? So let's go down the rose garden. It's been mould yesterday, so they're looking quite nice. But again, it's a shame that the roses aren't out yet. They will be soon. Glenn planted all these standard roses here last year. Again, that's another view of the house up onto the terrace. We'll all look there in a minute. So we'll do the garden first. So these yew hedges have little entrances. So this is an entrance into a small, well, quite a big lawn just next to the house. And these. Uh, Flower beds, we'll just have a quick scan down here. There's the house again. So some nice flowers. Not all out yet, and these are these roses here are very, very old and when they come out the smell's tremendous. The steps are all overgrown but purposefully. So there's lots of colour at the moment, it's really quite nice. And the perfumes are tremendous as well. Bluebells are still out. Stone bench there. More oldies. And these big fir trees. Okay. Well, what we'll do is we won't go back through the U, we'll go back down here. Down to the pond that you can hear. And the rose garden's over there, that's the entrance through from there. So, again, got the. Uh, and then that fantastic plant that it's a fuchsia uh, and the perfume's gorgeous we've got loads of those around and this tree here that's a bit sparse at the minute but when it's the leaves are fully grown it is staggeringly beautiful it's bright yellow and very very bright lightens the whole place up so we've got frogs and newts and all sorts of things in here little squirrel and you had go on the other side as well the ash trees and yeah, so let's go and look down at Lynn's veg garden. So we'll come through here. I smell the perfume from that plant from here. Even though it's getting towards its the end of its flowering period, it's still very strong perfume. And again, that's Muriel's favourite plant when it's out fully, that Japanese red thing, whatever it is. <laughs> okay, so we'll go through here. <laughs> Swallowed a fly. Um, these are magnolias. You can just see the one magnolia on. You can get it focused. Yeah, but when the tree is full of them, it's absolutely fantastic. So, uh, down the steps. There's some more magnolias in there. You can see them close up. Duck down. And this is Lynn's vegetable garden. It used to be a tennis court many years ago, um, but it was changed to a vegetable patch in the, the war and it was all grow for England. And the garden actually continues right down here. We might as well walk down, there's no, no problem is there. Keep me fit. 
You can see the blue bells are out and all the no, in the um, spring it's all uh, daffodils and snowdrops and things like that. So it's like a small orchardy type place. Down to our closest neighbour, other than the bungalow. That's a nice roadie over there, you see. They all seem to have different colours, they don't seem to be a consistent colour for audience, which makes them quite attractive. We have a, a neighbour over this fence, down there somewhere. And we have a, a little stream that runs down, drains all the water away from the land. So, and that's looking back at the house, which is quite a long way off, really. Uh, yeah, it's about 100 yards or so. So it uh, takes a bit of more in this lot. I'll stop it now while I walk back up. See all the cows in the field there. You can get sheep and all sorts of things. The village church it's just been charming. You hear the birds and the kids playing in the schoolyard at about it must be 200 yards away the school, but you can still hear them when the breeze is in that direction. So I'll just uh, come up here. Again, these are the back of the yew hedges. You know, a narrow path through to the uh, basically the animal sanctuary where Muriel feeds all the birds and squirrels. Everything else that moves. And there we go. So there's that lawn we came up before. There's the animal sanctuary. There's our surveyor. He's now on film just to prove that he's actually doing his job properly. There we go. Anyway, you know what the Aussies are like. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling you down under. Right, here we go, back again. So there's the office from the outside, in the back. Um, got some more bushes down there. There's bushes everywhere around here. Right, here we go. So we're coming up around the back of the house now, towards the, the greenhouse. This looks a bit untidy at the minute because we've got stuff to burn behind all the bins. But, uh, again, so we can now see the, the paddock again and the entrance down there. And that's where we came in. Okay, so this is the office building, if you like. Window there, and the garden shed. <coughs> going down there. So we're now coming into the the rear yard by the back door. So we'll do we'll do the office first, which is in there. That's the garage door. Uh, Right, we'll go in here first. So this is we just uh, we just come through the door. There we go. And in the first thing you see is the kitchen. So let's go in the kitchen. Uh, it's not very wide angle lens this, so it's difficult to to get it all. But uh, that's the view out the kitchen window. Obviously, look where the creatures are, which is nice. So we have a unit, microwave, fridge table and those white plastic things are where the networking and power for the computer goes and that's a window that shows into the kitchen that used to be the outside wall before this was built let's go back out so that's the outside door again notice i've taken my shoes off because i'm a good boy all right down here into the hallway so there's a, a bedroom here And the noise was this plastic stuff on the floor to stop muck getting trodden in. So it's a king size bed in there. It's a, quite a nice bedroom, this. And we have some cupboards for storage, which is all full of the boxes ready to go to Oz. Okay. Right, so let's come back out of there. So we go down there. Into, oh, well, that's the that's the garage door going there after. So there's a set of stairs goes right the way up here. Like that. And we'll go up now. Here we go. And 
again, we've got a nice view out the window. There's the garden. So, and this is where I used to make the pennies at one time. This is the office. So we've got Velux windows, a nice window overlooking the, the greenhouses. And the window there that uh, looks down the down the garden. And this is all the old networking and well, not all but the networking and computer bits. You can see. Quite a useful room. You know, they'll tell me off for taking the bathroom, but we do have a bathroom in here as well. So, loom, sink, ground here. Uh, bath and another Velox window. Have to be don't stand on there because it'll go through if you do. Right. Um, the reason the window's absolutely filthy is because the uh, the birds pull the moss off the roof and sprinkle it on the window, so it's, uh, it's a nuisance, but never mind. And we'll go down the stairs now. Right, we're going to the kitchen. We'll go around the terrace now. So, this terrace used to have uh, flower beds in it, but uh, it meant it was all blocked up and full of rubbish, and you know, so we had it all taken out and relayed. And it's uh, it's nice now. And there's our little uh, sit-in covered terrace, which we use quite a lot, even in the winter. So I'm sitting there with a brew or beer or Muro's case of vodka. And uh, so the view you get from here is uh, down to the pond. Dig in's great. Again, it just goes around here now to, uh, to where we were before, where the bird houses are, down the back of the house. The back again, looking up towards the terrace. This is quite nice. The uh, the flowers over the dining room window. They're not fully out yet. They just started. But in a few weeks' time, that will be an absolute mass of pink flowers. This is coming up to the entrance. I was first attracted by the door knocker and the, the brasses, so let's uh, go inside. We have a little vestibule thing and then into the house. Excuse us, Nick, now I've got a bit of hay fever. So we go through this door. Seem a little safe, big safe, outside again. So this is the hall, which is. Uh, one of the main features of the house. It's a uh, big fireplace, all the oak stairs and mullioned windows and lamps. Let's film the photographer. There we go. Found some guy. Clock. These are some pictures of the house as it was originally built. So that's the dining room. That's this hall, and that's the landing upstairs. Uh, well, so there's our dawn. And we've got some more pictures here of the outside of the house when it was uh, when it was originally built. You can see the gardens are not mature at all there. A little bit more mature here. You notice that, that well, there are some structural differences too. Right, so let's, uh, from here you can see that's the door out onto the terrace. I see that through there. Let's go and have a. So what you do is you come through here, and then you back out into the garden. Okay. So this is the dining room. Oak beams on the ceiling, it's all structural, it's not stick on things, it's proper stuff. And again, you see the mullioned windows, and this huge fireplace. The oak table, the 
dresser. A picture in the corner there. Of... This is Dawn and my grandsons and husband. And these fires are actually original dog grates, but they have got gas fire inserts. So that's the dining room. Nice room. I like this room. So coming back from here, again in the dining room here we have a big fire which again has original dog grates with uh, gas fires in. And into the lounge. So the lounge has a big bay window with seats around that we obviously sit on and look out in the garden. In this room is two main beams rather than lots of small ones. Uh, plasma TV and the fireplace again with these nice dog grates and See that the big picture. That's the Kapalua picture from over in Hawaii. And that's Muriel's dad's plant, which is 20 odd years old. And we keep trimming it and cutting it and growing it. And the problem is we can't take it with us, so we're going to have to find someone to give it a good home. So, have a look out here. This is looking out of the lounge onto the drive up. And, uh, Rose Garden. The terrace. And that's uh, the living room again. This window here takes us out onto the terrace, into the garden. So everywhere you look, there's lots of green and colour and that. So it's a, it's a nice house. Big outdoors. Right. So I hope we go. There we so, you. Let's go. Right, well, we'll go up the stairs now. I think you'll see enough in here. That's the hole again. So, up the stairs. Again, let's look out the windows. We've got the view over the paddock with the roadies again, right in entrance. And. There's a little folly here over the um, vestibule entrance with the big door under, the main doors underneath here. So again, you look down the drive, and this way looks out onto the the landing. It's a it's a galleried landing, which means it's a you know it's actually an entertaining room. The people who lived here before had a grand piano up here. We could have a billiard table or whatever. Okay, so let's go in the, the front bedroom. So this is the front bedroom, which uh, where these nice oak wardrobes fitted, and all this oak furniture was made for us to to match everything, because all the floors are oak and the skirting boards are oak. Everything's oak, and again another fire. Great. So there's our other oaks, and these two of the bedrooms have dormers that uh, overlook the garden. So again, this is overlooking the rose garden above the lounge. So again, you can see the view is primarily green. You know, there's no industrial thing around here. So let's go and look at the window. I'll just have a look at the window. Down onto the garden. Different, different view. Let's uh, go over here now. Back into the hall. And you see that you can see from one end of the house to the other uh, quite openly when the doors are open. It's, it's good. So there's a dormer here in the hall. This is Muro's exercise machine that uh, doesn't get used that often. But um, there we go. And again, get out the window. And that's the dining room down there. So you can see it's like a T shape. Give you another view of the Minstrel Gallery. And this is our bedroom, the one we use currently. It's a nice room. This it's cool in the win in the summer and warm in the winter. And again, we have a fire. Again, the mirrors and the wardrobes and everything were made for us when we first moved in. Let's just have a 
wand around. Yeah, it's a similar view again. All these rooms have three aspects, and that means that you can see in three different directions. So, direction one, direction two, direction three. It helps get light into the room at all times of the day. Fireplace. Big old wardrobes. The beams again, obviously, the beams everywhere. And the big bed and the bedside unit. The people who are buying the house are buying the unit, well, the units and the oak and everything's part of the sale. Because it all matches, it makes, partly makes the place. So this is the landing down to the third bedroom. There's a, a loo in there, you're not interested in that. There's a bathroom. Now this bathroom, um, again it's got oak units we had fitted, around the tanks and things. Uh, but it has a rather nice bath in it. It's uh, huge. I can lie down in that bath and go around to the water. Uh, it's, it's quite a unique thing really. Um, but the trouble is not everybody likes pink. But it suits us down to the ground. And if we look at this here, this is where the water comes out. There's actually a thermometer so you can actually see the temperature of the water when you actually turn it on through the taps here. It's got a nice pink bowl again. Again it's all very high quality and unmarked. It's, it's really quite nice. You know, did the curtains and the carpets and things obviously. Well and that's a, a favourite fish from if you got that in a way. Uh, there we go. So, this is the last bedroom in the house. Which again is a light and airy bedroom. It's got again our three aspects over that way over the paddock, that way over the field, and this way over the garden. And there's no creatures around to film at the minute. But this is the one of the beds we're taking to Australia and side units and what have you. So, so that's the upstairs. The only thing we haven't really seen now is the kitchen. So let's have a, a walk down. It's quite a light and airy place, even though it's lots of oak and things because of all the magnolia walls. It make a big difference. So this is the kitchen. This used to be three rooms. And we've had it made into one big room, so that's the back door, that's the fridge. Um, nice stone um, brick fireplace, and again that's living gas fire. And there's a, a nice bay window here, and we, use, we, we sit at this quite a lot in that little chair there. Because uh, you can see where all the birds and the squirrels and things come, because the surveyors here, they're not around at the minute. Coming down the other way, looking back out into the, the hallway, you can see we have a, an Arga, which is Nero's pride and joy. She's going to miss that. And I think that a barbecue is going to make up for that. Dishwasher in the corner and sink. Back out into the yard. These units here, when we wanted the one room, we lost the utility room. The, uh, they said we couldn't actually fit dryers and washers into units, so then foiled them because there's now a dryer and a washer. And the way we did that was we brought this, this wall out level with the chimney breast rather than going back as it is here. And the units actually fit into the wall, so <laughs> it's a bit of a fiddle, but it works very, very well. So that's my rush. I don't think I've missed anywhere. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Any questions? Ask us because we're showing it you. We haven't quite finished, have we? We've not been in the garage. This little door here is the, uh, the garden sh shed type thing. And uh, there's quite a lot of stuff in there, as you can see. Looking uses all that. And uh, what we're doing now is open this. Uh, Garage, I think. Okay. So only unlocks. That's a bit of security, isn't it? 
So this is uh, my garage and obviously the, the red car. You see we've got loads and loads and loads of everything in here and uh, how I'm ever going to sort it all out I don't know. But this goes on forever. Clothes and it's things you pick up over the years. When we moved in here there was just like a little bit of uh, shelf space usually and I put all the shelves up. But of course it, uh, it goes on and on and on. And there's the, the F40. Not a very really good shot of it because it's not really the best place to film it. I'm going to take me more with me. I've got to get that cleaned, I suppose. It's looking back down the yard. And we have a little storeroom in here. We've got some spare doors in case they want to change anything. You've even got a loo in here. So, there we go. So I think that's it now.